Okay, recording. So welcome people to, to OSC's webinar number two. What I'll start is with a summary of last session, overview of what's going today and going forward. There's going to be six seminars altogether, and the intent is to, to bring people up to speed, those especially who'd like to be OSC ambassadors, meaning those people who are interested in communicating and sharing the message of OSC to others, to invite them to working teams. This is intended for people who are interested in starting OSC chapters. And another very particular group which I want to make explicit is, is the entrepreneurial aspect. So all of the work of OSC revolves around, there's the Global Village construction set that you know, but what is it about? It's not about a bunch of hippies running into the woods, but about real product development, about products that can enter and be used for real in the, in the economy. So if we, if we talk like that, we have to keep the goal in mind that at the end of the day, it's about livelihoods that people can take on using our tools and techniques. And for that, we have to discuss enterprise. And the way we go about, we, we promote the concept of distributive enterprise very strongly. And that concept is the idea that whatever we produce that is economically significant, we open up the blueprints for that as well. So there you can have design blueprints and you can have enterprise blueprints. That means how do you actually run a business or an enterprise for meaningful livelihood running uh, using the, the tools and techniques that we develop. And that means spanning everything from the machines in the Global Village construction set to derivative products, such as how about a house or an aquaponics greenhouse or an orchard or an afforestation project uh, or a micro factory for producing anything. Uh, the derivatives and the uses are, are many. Brief intro. I'm going to share my screen now and go through the topics for today. So if you if you look at start screen share, so looking at what we'll talk about today, Web, webinar two. So the first is a review of the the session from week before, the overview which I presented, and now I've defined the audience. I'm going to discuss the the tools that we use as common practice within the project, so that whenever we set up working teams or we we get into real development, we can be on the same page without having to explain things. I mean, the, the basic idea for a project that's, that's large and, and tries to involve many people with open boundaries is that unless you address the issue of getting everybody on board to the same page, like where are your documents, where do you, you know, where, what are your communication channels, where do you find the files, everything like that has to be clear and transparent before a person comes in, otherwise uh, meetings turn into into real inefficiency and it's it's something we're trying to work on we've seen in our design sprints that the more people are aware where everything is located you can really go into focused parallel development with many people at the same time and that's tricky because I mean it's it's it requires a whole frame of mind whole understanding of collaborative literacy which I mentioned before and just a different mindset of how how it is to work in, a, in an organization that's got closed boundaries where there's a fixed team to something where the boundaries are really loose and inviting which which shows both opportunities and challenges in that, in that method okay but the main point of today I will discuss so besides the tools used the development method itself if OSC is about developing open products then we have to have a well-defined granular process for doing that and I'll go through an overview of what we use as a general development template today so that's the product we call the product design template where we do the design documentation work to develop any products any machines the tractors or greenhouses or houses whatever uh, on top of the plain product development or product design there's a project management infrastructure that has to be put into place and we have a template for that I'll go over what that looks like using the simple techniques that we use right now for highly agile operation and then I'm going to talk about the enterprise template what do we do with respect to developing open enterprise which we call distributive enterprise that anyone can benefit from and the promise is to create the Google's the the bigger than Google tr next trillion dollar economy by spreading open knowledge and to be clear about how that goes it's not about OSC developing okay here's the thing on a golden platter it's the concept that just like in maybe Linux and Wikipedia the concept that you seed a project you seed a kernel a design platform 
set of principles where we produce some initial designs and we've built a number of things. Some of them are pretty much towards completion. But the power of the project re relies on the fact that people are going to take what we have done and because of the proof of concepts, just the, just the pushing of the limits of what we have shown is possible, people take that and then go to the next level on that to make the products truly competitive or better than industry standards. So, so a lot of times people come to this project getting disappointed, thinking we've got all the answers on a platter, but we don't. And the whole game of this is that we make that clear and, and empower the people to work with us for the common goal of creating the open source economy, the overall arching goal of open source ecology, which is a paradigm shift. So it doesn't happen by us just saying, here it is. No, it's everybody that comes into it that makes it happen. So that's that's the enterprise development uh, project. Sorry, project management. The the aspects of organizational project management that goes on for each development project, each working team. Now the next uh, next level of what I'll talk about is the enterprise template. So for enterprise, we go about developing enterprise in particular ways, which I'll talk about. And then I'll talk about factory farm. What is the what is the model by which we operate here? What's the role of factory farm? our operation facility what's the role of this campus concept an education immersion training production campus concept that we're trying to develop and then i'll go to the conclusion okay so first to review what we've done done the last week uh, we we had a we've shared a high level overview of the entire organization uh, so you can you can follow the uh so andrew are you um are you guys seeing the <laughs> okay, so there's a link to the actual working. Where are we here? Okay, there's a link to the working document which I which I've asked. Um, yeah, Andrew is going to be pasting the link to to the working document. So I'm going to share my screen again and go with the review of last week. So last week we discussed. Um, can you guys see the screen, the 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 Google Doc screen? No, we can see you. Let me sh try that again. Share screen. Start screen share. Now, can you see it? Yes. Okay, great. Review. High level. So last time we talked about the high level overview of OSC the milestones that have been achieved to date, six major ones, and the 20-year plan of the OSC campus operations. If you have any questions and suggestions, by the way, please submit the webinar review. So you can click on that link. We're going to produce, be producing these, these webinars iteratively, so that if you have any suggestions or things that weren't clear that we can use improving, please do so using the webinar review form. So last, last time, we talked about collaborative literacy. And just to emphasize that, uh, I'll point you to this website, Faster Than 20, but let's, let's read what they say. So collaborative literacy is the ability to, to cooperate with others. So from that website, it says, the skills required to be and work with others effectively can be considered literacies, and in particular, the collaborative literacy. Our ability to be self-aware, to communicate effectively, to navigate power, to ask generative questions, to design and facilitate effective group processes, all of these are learned skills that require practice to master and maintain. So these are all learned skills, and as the OSC community, it's our goal that we teach everybody on board what collaborative literacy is to get out of the mindset of solo work, uh, basically solo warriors, reinvention of the wheel constantly, competitive waste, to true collaborative literacy. So that the Faster Than 20 website, that's, there's got some good materials there that you can read further. Uh, last time we talked a little bit about developing working teams with the end effect of within about a year's period, we'd like to get to a point of 100 full-time effort equivalent on the project. That means a number of independent working teams that operate autonomously pretty much with uh, their leaders working with the core team. Now, currently, we have a, between about four and six full-time equivalent over throughout the entire project. We've got a long way to go. Now, from last week, you might gather that the Global Village Construction Set is a BHAG, so a big, hairy, audacious goal. And how do you do it? 
Uh, it is possible because, first of all, we're, we're developing things that have already been developed. We're just open sourcing them. But the way in particular that we go about it is by modular design, a construction set approach to do a parallel, to do a massive parallel effort with microtasking. So what's modular design? Modular design means that we break things apart into smallest pieces possible. Construction set means that with the modules, we can create many, many different things using common elements like Legos so that we enable a parallel effort. And the microtasking comes in the fact that if we can define the small steps one by one that are used to develop an entire process or pr project, then we can distribute those microtasks to a large number of people through a large parallel effort. And I believe that Linux and Wikipedia are good examples where that is occurring in software and information. It's about scaling this to, to hardware. Okay, the next p important point. We're talking about Global Village Construction Set as a platform, not as a product. So there's individual machines that we do produce. They're real products and maybe derivatives of them like houses or orchards. But the platform is a more generalized open source product development methodology that we're trying to develop as we build the Global Village Construction Set using the Global Village Construction Set as the testing bed for how all the different parts of the process, development process work together. So in order to change the world, we can't be talking about putting out products. We have to talk about a paradigm, about a platform that other people can use to do similar work. And last part from last week's review is the enterprise community aspect of the, the OSC campus. Uh, and just to clarify on that, it's um, until 2012, we were kind of like a, almost like an intentional community kind of setting. But I mean, that's, that's history. Uh, the more accurate way to talk about Open Source Ecology's campus is we're a nonprofit organization, we're an enterprise community, we're going to reframe around an education campus model, um, basically like a contract-based enterprise community organized as essentially as a campus, learning campus, uh, and less of a, I mean, people have, when initially people have looked at the project, they said, oh, it's a bunch of hippies in a commune or some intentional community. We'd like to position it less as that and more as the, as the, the campus model, because it's not, it's really about creating uh, real products and creating um, basically a, an education facility, less than people just coming here to live or kind of hang out which was as we grow forward and move forward we we emphasize that we're about developing real substance not just hanging out in the woods <laughs> okay so today so for today um i mentioned that the audience is osc ambassadors chapters working teams and federation of open source entrepreneurs so that's a new new concept i'm going to introduce today um, when we go forward in the project we have to talk about developing real working enterprise that works, that can be replicated in many parts around the world. And because we share plans openly for that, we call it the way we want to roll out the economics is through a federation concept, just like WordPress is the best example. WordPress is a federated architecture for a project. Now, now WordPress is a billion dollar project or more. It's a huge project and their economics come from a distributed federated model. We're trying to ask, well, what does it look like for developing open hardware where you have different development hubs or people using the core available platform or the core blueprints to do many things, uh, but at the same time sharing the economic know-how so that people can replicate enterprise, enterprises around it. So, so the audience, the intended audience for this, this presentation here as we go forward to complete the Global Village construction set are those entrepreneurs who are concerned about making this a real livelihood as a federated organization, which is the real challenge, because how do you keep to a small decentralized organization while providing huge economic impact that's going to gobble up the mainstream system at best? Big question. So it requires real innovation on what the, the entrepreneurial aspects look like. Okay. So audience, entrepreneurial mindset, that's required for whoever wants to work with open source ecology. So now let's dive into the weeds here. What I mean, what are the basics of the simple tools that we use, tools, development, spreadsheets? What do we do? Well, all OSC collaborators start with a basic knowledge of the simple tools. And it's essentially wikis, embeddable online documents. So for the wiki in particular, the skills you have to have is, or what you, you should be able to, you know, say, say you're an OSE ambassador and you, you're trying to explain the project to somebody else, how do you get involved? 
you, you would need to know how to log into the wiki to be able to edit and insert images, videos, files, and embed any HTML content. And that's summarized on the wiki instructions. That's uh, so I'm on page four of the presentation. So on page four. So so wiki instructions provide all of that. And if they don't, help us edit them. The wiki is an open platform. Uh, for pr continuous project collaborators, everyone sets up a work log. So you can click on a work log for instructions for how to set that up. And that's because we like transparency. At best, we'd like to have that anybody knows what all is going on on project without having um, just by looking on the internet. So for that we use logs. Click on the lo link for lo logs. Where we use personal work logs like I just mentioned. There are also team logs and other logs that document the progression of the project on many many topics. So uh, a collaborator also has to know how to use and embed Google presentations, docs, spreadsheets into the wiki. So I won't go into the details of how to do that here. You can Google that and that should be in the wiki instructions. But that's a definite thing to, to be able to, to do that so that people can collaborate on editing documents or conceptual designs or even getting into technical designs using very simple drawings on the internet. So imagine, for example, you know, you get 10 real subject matter experts in design. They get around this Google Doc. I actually did that with uh, another person in the gasifier yesterday. We were both madly putting in the conceptual design elements of the gasifier. How far can we scale that? Can you have 10 people? do that where, where literally it's like you swarm on this one document and then the design just keeps getting more and more rich. Now you can do that pending that you can break the project down into modules and it's hence the module based design but in principle you can break down a project have a whole swarm of experts or skilled people or novices whoever work on that and rapidly you can generate an entire product by a, a parallel process and the way it if you can see the other people's work in real time, that's the way you can see how, okay, this project is moving forward, you can work collaboratively, as opposed to a linear, totally linear sequence when one person, traditional waterfall development, one person does something, then it gets passed on to the next person, to the next step, next step, Well, we're trying to parallelize that using embeddable Google Docs. So for example, Google Docs, Etherpad, and other tools are able to do that. You can see in real time what the other person is doing. That can happen with things like using Upverter for electronics design. People can actually be working in parallel on a complex circuit where many people put in the pieces at the same time. Okay. So the last thing, the most advanced thing, is how do you, how do you do, um, uh, if you know how to use the wiki and spreadsheets that are embeddable, or Google Docs or whatever other content that's embeddable, you should be able to, as an exercise, fork a project upload new file versions. So what is this? So let's talk about forking projects and I'll talk a little bit more about it. But in principle, if we have the development spreadsheet of all the steps, all the content for a given project, you should be able to take that, clone it, and start a new project based on a cloned version of that. That's what GitHub does. So in GitHub, you can go to an existing, GitHub is a repository, a project system for keeping versions of software projects. You can take a project, you can take the source code and build upon it by starting a new project or a derivative. Well we have to be able to do that in hardware. So for us that's where we use our development spreadsheets and to start a new project you will take simply a copy, so we have to know how to make a copy within Google Docs. You copy that, put it on a new web page, new wiki page, and you can start developing all the content for a new project. What about new file versions? If there's a file that's already old, then you got to update it. Well, the wiki has file versioning in it, so we don't necessarily need to use GitHub. The wiki, if you click on an existing file, you can upload a new version, so the wiki comes with a functionality for keeping new versions or version tracking. You can put, put comments there as well. So the ultimate test of whether you're capable of, of working with at the highest level of the, ba the very basic tools of a project that needs to be able to fork or start new projects, whichever, uh, under the assumption that we're an open project, people can take our source code and develop new projects from it. So, so I'll talk a little bit more about forking once we look at the, what the actual development template looks like. Now, understanding wiki culture. 
So Wikiculture it may be a little confusing or intimidating to some, but that's the way we work. Wikiculture is that it's an agile envir environment where someone can take your work and they can edit it. So Wiki allows you to log in and edit mercilessly upon any content, any text, just like Wikipedia. Okay, so you have to understand that uh, anyone can log in and edit that it's a sandbox and do not worry about it being a sandbox and we've had a lot of people freak out at us saying hey your wiki's a total mess which it can be but the thing is that indexing templates semantic organization can all be placed on top of the content that's already in the wiki so it doesn't matter that the wiki is a sandbox up front because if it's such a database which it is it's a database then you can put the structure on top of that. Now the most advanced way of doing that, and that's like the next iteration of the web, is semantic organization. So semantic wiki, uh, or semantic the semantic web, Tim Berners-Lee, the famous guy, um, the latest in web is the semantic web. And we can actually use semantic, ex semantic media wiki extensions on the media wiki we use media wiki the open source ecology wiki uses the media wiki platform and there's a media wiki semantic uh, semantic web extension for it that we plan on using in the future we don't have that set up yet it's one of the many things we have to do for the project in order for the organization the huge mess of organization on the wiki to be categorized organized displayed in any way needed and for that don't worry about the mess right now it's about as we go forward with teams we create the organization as we move along okay so I already mentioned that ver version control does exist on the wiki altogether it's a powerful tool anything can be embedded readily and changed giving maximum flexibility for communicating content so we're not we're not imagining this the largest public interest project in the world uses media wiki and that is Wikipedia so people all the time come to us saying, oh yeah, you know, you should something, use this or that. And yeah, we use all kinds of tools and we want to borrow all the tools from everywhere. Um, but the wiki is in itself a powerful tool. And you can think of our work as basically a mashup of all the best tools that are out there. And the good thing about the wiki is that readily you can, you can do HTML embeds, which allow you to put any content in there. It's a content management system. So for what we want to do, it's appropriate and we can create the structure on top of it. Okay, so that's the basics of the tools used. Now I'm going to go into the actual development spreadsheets. So what are the development spreadsheets? If you go to page five of the uh, presentation, the OSC Webinar 2 presentation, click on the development template. So there it is. And first of all, I just put a little uh, cut in there. How do you create an account if you're not on a wiki? Well, that's a sideline. Okay, development template, click on it, and it takes you to a spreadsheet uh, it's a page on a wiki called development spreadsheet template this is the template that we use for organizing our work so so that template uh, to explain it the front page of it contains all the information about product development the, the basic things you need to do to to develop a product now you see on the bottom there's a bunch of tabs and only the first three tabs are somewhat developed the development tab which is really the product development tab the second project management tab on the base of that uh, which talks about the different elements of how you manage a project with a team and the third one is event organization which is why I have event organization is because the the current business model for how we're going forward is organizing e production slash immersion learning events so the third tab there the event organization is basically us documenting how we organize an event such that anyone who tries to do the similar workshops or replicate our work already has a template with all the things figured out from how do you advertise to to how do you find a project leader how do you know how do you do everything related to any task so let's start with a development template okay uh, if we talk about the development template uh, the basic methodology that we use uh, if you want to keep looking at the the development spreadsheet template the, the dev the first tab in the spreadsheet the basic methodology revolves around taking industry standards and open sourcing them. So what we do is we, for the Global Village construction set, for any of the machines that we develop, we take, simply take a look at as the first step, what are, what's exists and how can we do better to, to make it human-centered design, simplified, modular, and all of the OSE spec. 
So we develop a highly mo granular module based microtasking approach towards autonomous execution. So what's this autonomous execution? So the nature of the development spreadsheet is to make the development process granular enough that at the end of the day people can follow that process readily and as people get adept at doing that you can literally have self-organized working teams using the, the methods which are now well documented and all of that. So now the current state is we're not there yet by any means. Each of the different steps has a protocol or a certain pathway to doing that step but that's something we're developing as we go along continuously whenever there's a new t software tool that comes up or a new you know something new that we find out we we iterate we continuously develop the the spreadsheet and the method to make it better and better um, so so the way that we we start or develop is that we need to basically focus the effort of many individuals onto a, a well-defined well-defined track of development and to do that we have to focus people by there's three main things that we talk about that that we have as our kind of like funnel or guideline the first of them is o OSC spec the open source ecology specifications there's a wiki page called OSC specifications you can look that up and that lists a large number of of desirable product features or approach features that we follow for all projects namely that we're absolutely open source that we're transparent that we're modular that we do test driven design that uh, just about any property of the system is in there and that's a, that's a whole lesson on itself uh, you can go through the OSC specifications but if you look at the OSC designs they're intended to be as much in sync with OSC specifications as possible so that they fit not only as individual machines but as the entire set so for example the fact that we're developing a product ecology for a set is one of the OSC specifications you don't develop a single machine you develop a, a system of machines which includes common parts it also includes scalability lifetime design other desirable features so we can take a look at that OSC specifications on the wiki I mentioned that product ecology is critical so so to develop a machine you have to look at the whole set of machines as a system now OSC parts library is perhaps the most the single most limiting or focusing feature of the development method the parts library means basically that once a product is well enough developed we put it as an official version that people can use to build other things like for example the current power cube is an accepted stable release that people can use in other projects so that the the parts the power cube now enters the parts official parts library so you can for example stack power cubes to make to make micro tractors or bulldozers but you have the the well-defined building block available now as we go into the future our goal is to generate a parts library so complete that you can basically drag and drop within an open source software like FreeCAD or Blender or anything. I mean, we use SketchUp a lot these days. But the intent of the parts library is that you can basically drag and drop and make actually uh, plugins for FreeCAD. That's We're discussing that right now, actually. Plugins for FreeCAD, where you basically drag and drop parts into a working design. So there's no controversy, like, OK, is this does this fit with the set? So one, you have the entire modules and machines like power cubes. The other thing is, you know, say we use the engine or this hydraulic pump. Well, that in itself should be a module within our part, parts library, meaning an official, fully detailed CAD file, so that if someone else wants to develop on the power cube, they have the modules, the sub-modules, i.e. the parts, to build other iterations of the power cube. So the parts library concept is very powerful, and we, we need to really develop that right now. Uh, we've got some parts like the structural steel tubing, the power cube, some hydraulic parts in the library. But as time goes on, we create a standard set of parts that it becomes really turnkey and easy for, for everybody to, to, to create the OSC machines. And next, of course, is the step that we end up making our own parts. So while right now we're depending on, a, on industrial supply chains to provide all the parts, eventually we will be making our own and making the the whole library more refined just small smaller more powerful and le smaller leaner better as time goes on and that's once again where the global collaboration effort is, is critical so 
that's how we focus the development along the OSC development pathway. So now if you, so there's the product development spreadsheet. Um, so if we go back into the development spreadsheet, let's look at the actual parts of it. What are the different topics? Well, first of all, there's the background research that you have to do. That includes things like uh, patent search and background research, study of industry standards, uh, study of the product ecology of the entire Global Village construction site, which is actually, you, know, you can click, for example, on product ecology to find out what are the OSE product ecologies. We've already defined a bunch of that, and of course, it's always up for revision, but we've done a bunch of work on that already, and so forth. At the end of the day, you want to do something like an OSE specification review, meaning that you take the OSE specifications and you, you pass your proposed design through that filter to make sure that you're designing it in a proper way. So, so then you get to the actual design. For the design, you always start. You want to start with a requirement. What are the requirements of what you have to design? Then you go into concept, conceptual design. Whenever we design a complex machine like a tractor, you want to break it down into modules, then define interfaces, and then get into the the real 3D CAD design, then calculations, um, then generate the files towards the actual build. So the next step is the build and then data collection. So altogether in a in the development process, um, the thing to notice is that it's a highly iterative test-driven design process, meaning that anytime we we find something new, we go back and iterate so that it's not just waterfall, it's basically you don't just go linearly from finish to end, you're always open to making revisions, and therefore uh, the process is kind of nonlinear, but at best, you're always learning and not being fixed on one, one pathway, but using a more agile approach. Now, to get into the details, um, I might try to get into uh, the details. Actually, you know, for the, the, the point that remains right now, you can look at for all the, the deliverables that you see in column B of the development template. You can, I won't go into the details simply, there's not enough time at this point, but each one of the steps and there's currently 32 steps you know up to things like you know bug tracker review by other people performance data collection build videos cut lists build pictures build prep i mean workshop organization those are all the steps we need to acknowledge for developing a, a certain product but the point is each one of them is is hyperlinked and it goes back to the wiki to define a procedure. Now you'll see that a lot of the procedures are in progress and some of them are not even not even done. Like for example, item 18, wiring diagram. How do you do a wiring diagram? Well, we haven't really written down any processes for how to do that. What we want to do is take known industry standards, build upon them, and then, then modify them for the tools that we use. Like for example, do we use um, Google Docs to to draw up wiring diagrams. Do we use a professional package like you know like some professional circuit design package or whatever? Whatever we use, we document so that everybody uses uses uh, similar tools. Now we we're not we don't want to be reductionist in in a, in just saying oh you just got to use that tool. We don't do that. What we do is we say okay these are our recommended tools. But if somebody is, you know, is a master of some piece of software and they don't want to use something else, that's fine as well. Okay, whoever cut in, please uh, mute yourself or whoever is creating noise out there. Okay, the point is that we, we pr provide recommended tools as our official recommendations, but of course people will come up with their own tools and skill sets and we want to be open to that. So the simple answer to that is whenever you know, one of the guidelines for any design step is to, if you generate some product, do it in many formats. You know, if it's a CAD file, do a step, do a blender, do a sketch up. I mean, upload all those files and each of them can be tracked on the wiki. But, you know, for example, step, it's an open source format. So we say we recommend that as our universal interchange format. Um, but we're open to many other other options. Now, the main point to note is that the entire development process, while it's defined loosely or generally, more or less, the details of how we work it as a group, how to adapt it for the processes that we develop in working teams, that's all to be developed. And as I'm saying, it's once again, it's we don't have the product on a platter. We want to involve everybody in, in generating that. So 
just a little more about the development template. Column A is just the number of the step. Column B is the deliverable, meaning what's the step, development step itself. Column C is the link to the work product. Now, what does that mean? That means once you generate that product, for example, an infographic or 3D CAD, you put a link under the link to work product and link that back to the wiki typically. Wiki is our general sandbox for putting everything. So link back to the wiki, embed your files there so that someone can take a look at this uh, this development spreadsheet, say for the, you know, we're working on a gasifier as the example right now. You can look at the gasifier development spreadsheet exercise. Can you find that on the wiki? Uh, look at that and there's some items that are filled in. So when you click on, click on any of the items in the blue column, you will be taken to the work product. Now the last column D is related to the burn down graph. For each step that we do, we want to mark it as complete from level of completion from 1 to 10 such that at the bottom you sum that all up and all the tens means that the entire product is complete. Or if there's a step that you don't need, like for example, if you're designing a house, you might not have electronics layouts when you're designing a house. So cut out line number 17. But anyway, when, when the product is finished, the sum of the basically the burn down graph can be generated basically by a time sequence of the percentage completion completion which is the number of points one through ten so that's summed up over an entire column d and a, a percentage of completion is generated as a result of uh, of looking at the status of completion so for example if you think the 3d cad is completely done or whoever's the project manager for a group uh, typically, the, I guess the project manager would would type in the level of completion. When it's done, write a 10. If it's if there's nothing, just you can even keep it blank. Or if it's some in, one line has been written, or one little piece of content, you may type one or whatever, so that you can track which what is the state of development of a given given step. Okay, th that's the basics of the uh, development template itself. Now, the way it works, the template can be applied to machines, modules, or parts. It can be applied at any level. If we apply the modularity concept, we can treat, if we treat things as modules, then, for example, you can have a development spreadsheet, you can have a development spreadsheet for the entire tractor, or you can have a development spreadsheet just for the tractor frame. So maybe, maybe the project leader would start the project out with, okay, we've got the tractor as the overall project, now, once a sub-team goes into, for example, the frame, and it has all these different development elements, and you want to parallelize the process of, say, building the frame and the drive unit at the same time, it's effective to, to create separate development templates for each of the modules. And that's the way we granularize the process. We break it into modules and then break it into very granular steps to develop in parallel. That's the basic functioning of the development spreadsheet. Okay, so there's the product development template. Now I'll move on to the next step, which is the project management spreadsheet. So if you go to page seven of the presentation, um, actually I'm almost running out of time here, so I'm gonna go through this. I'm gonna go through the two more spreadsheets and then start wrapping up. So go to page seven, link to the spreadsheet. Project management. The project management is the second tab within the development template. The project management refers to the actual organization of a team, how they collaborate, how they communicate, and any tools around the project management of a given project. So there's things like, first of all, when you manage a project, you have to look at what is the status. So the first items one through six are the various status things. So, for example, a critical path of that project. What is that particular project trying to do, and what are the steps and timelines for that? What is the project status? Is it begun? Is it stalled? Where is it? Project log. So, any project should start a project log in addition to the person's per, individual person's work log for transparency. Current problem statement. That refers to what is the project really trying to solve right now? Like, for example, for the gasifier, the current problem statement is designing the best hearth, the best part of it, the, the burn chamber so it doesn't melt. Like, we're really, you know, that's our main issue to resolve right now. So the current problem statement may be an updated log of what is um, what the current development is. Roadmap, 
the roadmap should refer to a, a more broad roadmap for what what the version of that project is what's the eventual product like for example if we're doing a gasifier for the micro tractor right now the roadmap is that we get a fully automated system that's turnkey you just turn a switch on and it turns on the roadmap is a fully automated gasifier that you run on your bulldozer for example so that's like say the last state of the the gasifier or, or whatever it is uh, document the roadmap that shows where that project is with respect to the overall goal of the project the burn down graph graph six shows you where the particular project is in time right there from from not complete to fully complete a burn down graph now the team so the team is a very important part the the point that we can build and invite people to our teams with open boundaries we can get gain access to subject matter experts who like the nature of our open source project that's a real boon to to open source projects basically we're able to access a lot of development talent because people are aligned with our public interest mission and are willing to contribute so that's the best case is that we find subject matter experts that can help us so a big part of the team team process is how do we how do we find new members for teams I mean there's many elements to the team team aspect but first of all item number seven what is the working team so list your members so you can contact them working team charter so when you begin a team that's we're gonna have a separate session on this how do you start a team and get everybody on the same page of where that is going Laura's gonna help us on on running that education session on a team charter in the future one of the next webinars contributor logs are logs of all the people in a project communication channels list lists everything where we communicate from email to social media to to hangouts where are we present on the internet scrummy is a simple scrum based uh, project management tool it's very simple it allows you to put tasks and attach names to them according to the scrum methodology we do agile we do it basically an agile scrummy uh, a mixture of a waterfall and agile process we call it kind of like scrummy waterfall if you may but basically we're highly agile with the addition that we create an initial uh, waterfall plan but with the knowledge that it's up online on editable Google Docs that are changed readily so while we try to say okay this is what a regular project would look like well but because of the reality of the project it's because it's highly iterative and agile uh, we use the scrum methodology to to do that uh, very agile contributor meta map so when we develop certain projects we want to be aware of who else is in a space so first of all in an open source community we like to recruit from other open source projects but also what are the other proprietary projects or everyone else in the same space say for the gasifier you know what organizations exist what industry associations are around what are the forums um, what's the greater map of the potential team because at any time we should be able to access and call out other team members as an open project okay so team recruiting is another part how do we do that I don't know I mean we, we recruit by reaching out to people to by identifying um, known experts and inviting them personally we go to we do various things like go to conferences and call out for contributors there where we have online presence we recruit through our social media but processes need to be defined so that team leaders are able to access a database of our resources for team building uh, our, our channels for communication so that we can build teams effectively team training is a big aspect so so for any team like for example if we're doing a gasifier what is the background information for the team for the team like it, it could start with these webinars it could start with background info on the gasifier it could start with um, background on the OSC development process so we want to train our people to get them on as soon as possible because we we do have the assumption that a person can be a very short-term or long-term contributor we allow both as an open project so in order to guarantee continuity if the the contributor is only a very point contributor short term you want to guarantee that the continuity happens you want to train people effectively and have everybody keep logs and work logs and document in, in our spreadsheets so that whatever's generated is not lost so the theoretical limit of effective teamwork is that any piece of effort that somebody puts in whether it's you know understanding something 
or whatever whatever is done somehow it's recorded so that somebody who leaves the team doesn't take all that information they generated and just buries it because nobody can find it that's the industry standard for everybody including many open source projects i mean typically I mean, the documentation is hard. Unless you're very rigorous about documenting everything that you do, you, many people just end up following after you and asking the same questions, repeating the same work, and so forth. Okay. So on the uh, last parts of the project management, there's organization. There's various wiki templates that we're encouraged to create to communicate the product that we generate. As I mentioned, the wiki, over the wiki, we can impose templates, and other organization that can display information in any way that we like. So if you think the wiki is ugly, uh, one thing you can do is generate a template that, for example, takes various pieces of information from this spreadsheet and displays it in a very nice, effective way. Now that gets into template creation and maybe HTML and CSS, um, but those computer programmers that can join the project can, for example, or people f familiar with s some of this, the tools can generate templates or semantic structures once we install the semantic media wiki on the wiki and so forth. So other part of project management is submitting bug reports and knowing where project repositories are. So basically, where are all the files for a project kept? Some are on a wiki. There might be some, some YouTube videos. There might be some online other repositories. We have to document all that. And naturally, not everything, you know, like GitHub is not the Uber answer, right? There's going to be various places where all the media and assets are going to be located. There might be some, some media sharing sites for pictures. Another place might be just for videos. So there's not a straightforward answer. So that, that's why project repositories have to be, docu have to be documented for every single project. So we've got, when you talk about open source projects, some of the topics you talk about are forking, you know, there's project management, project repository, submitting bug reports, and so forth. So basically the point is, we have to figure out all those mechanisms, and we've got some ideas, like whatever's documented on these templates, but it's it's constantly evolving. So let me just get back into forking, like the forking aspect, when when people collaborate, we, we encourage that people take the information and start, you know, say somebody wants to start a different project on some related technology or just whatever. I, I get con um, basically get contacts like that all the time. Um, and my answer from now on will be more like, OK, so we've got these basic tools that we use. If you'd like to join the project, you have to understand the distinction between forking and the wiki, between really between forking and a library that's the wiki. So if someone wants to contribute to the project, they can simply use the wiki, document, put stuff there like Wikipedia or Apropedia. It's got a whole bunch of information. Anyone can do that. Now, if you want us to actually build the machines or you want to get more deeply involved or you want to commit a design for consideration into our design repository, then that's a different story. That's where the formal process would be. You copy this development spreadsheet you start documenting all the things, all the required things. Then you can email us. We actually have a commit form on the wiki. And that goes to a project manager. And that project manager will now take that information that was submitted, basically a link to the development wiki page with a template, development template. And, and they can evaluate, for example, the cat. OK, does this meet our needs? And do we actually want to take this information, push it, pull it back into the official OSC design library that's so that's the distinction between forking projects and committing so-called code back to the project or just using the wiki to document various things okay that's that's that so project management so the last thing is um enterprise development spreadsheet um and I'm going to wrap up after that pretty quickly so enterprise development click on that's page eight of the in, in the presentation on page eight, if you click onto the enterprise development, our current model is the workshops with uh, where we both produce and train people. In this development template, we have documented the various assets that we need to generate to, to organize a workshop from event announcements to site preparation to, to blog posts to media publicity and so forth. This is just a template. Now, the next step on the, on the enterprise templates so that template is called event organization. 
basically independent production or, or basically the distributed enterprise templates are to be developed for when we take for example the brick press and document the entire process of how you can take the brick press work with a local fabricator and make money selling the machine it's open source you can do that so the next some of the next steps which we'd like to organize teams about would be the enterprise development front the call out is that we'd like to get a peop group of people working the the brick press is the farthest developed product we can do the same for the power cube but taking all the steps required to develop those projects to completion that's the next step now for the enterprise development there's other topics that come into play for example like legal issues safety disclaimers or legal structure for an organization that would produce this what is the operations plan for an enterprise the business plan so that would go all into a, a business development uh, template methodology that we still have to develop we're not there yet but if you can think about a single product if, you, if, if i would think about enterprise development perhaps an operations manual is the ultimate product that the business development team would produce the operations manual would be basically all that you need to run start and manage an organization producing one of the gvcs products or its derivatives now we don't have any single example of a full operations manual we have a template for that only a small template actually from lulzbot who is sharing so lulzbot we're collaborating with them they're they're willing to share things like their own operations manual that's the fast up and growing 3d printer company they're fully open source free software free hardware uh, we can build upon their operations manual template to appropriate to it for all the processes that go on within osc so if you want to start a business that's the level at which the, the final goal of OSC product development would be operation manuals for how to run a business doing one of the things that we do. Okay, so that um, sums up the development on a business front that there's much work to be done there. Now, I already briefly mentioned as I wrap up here the factory farm, the campus model, the long-term goal is in order to change the world, we have to, to change people's hearts and minds, we have to educate them. So the campus model is fitting for open source ecology as an education organization. We're looking at setting up two to four year immersion training programs. Um, the immediate steps to this, perhaps you can say this webinar is a very feeble start. We start with the webinar, we go on to perhaps one month full immersion training and then developing further and further training programs so that we can teach other people to run workshops to start enterprises using the GVCS models. Uh, so that the campus model is the long-term evolution of the project and that we we hope to have a fully developed replicable campus groundbreaking within five years finished within 10 years such that global viral replication has a chance to happen to thousands of such facilities independent mostly by by and far independent because we'll publish all the models so that we can change the world okay so conclusion in conclusion next topics just to go through an overview of what's coming next the next webinar is going to be about how do we build the teams specifically